Vibrational spectroscopy, infrared versus Raman. When a molecule absorbs radiation, it is excited to a higher energy level. This can occur in three processes. The first usually occurs when the molecule is excited by microwave or infrared radiation and results in a rotational energy level transition. The next route involves infrared or visible light, and a vibrational transition can occur. Lastly, when a molecule is excited by UV light, an electronic energy level transition occurs. Vibrational spectroscopy involves the transition of vibrational states and is the general term used to describe two analytical techniques, Raman and IR spectroscopy. These methods measure vibrational energy levels associated with particular chemical bonds in a sample. This theory views chemical bonds as springs, derived from Hooke's law, rather than the traditional ball and stick model, and shows how an input of energy into a molecule will cause it to vibrate. Molecules have vibrational modes that are dependent on the orientation of the atoms and bonds, the atomic mass of the atoms, bond order, and hydrogen bonding. The number of possible vibrational modes in a molecule depends on the following formulas. Nonlinear molecules can have 3n minus 6 possible vibrational modes, while linear molecules can have 3n minus 5 possible variations, where n represents the number of atoms. These patterns of vibration relate to the molecular symmetry of the molecule and allow us to deduce the molecular shape and determine information about the strength of each bond. Here we show five vibrational modes using carbon dioxide and methane. This model shows the symmetric stretch in carbon dioxide. This is the asymmetric stretch in carbon dioxide, the bend in carbon dioxide, scissoring in methane, and rocking in methane. Infrared spectroscopy is more common than Raman spectroscopy and involves irradiating the substance of interest with infrared light. Molecules in the substance will selectively absorb the energies of the light corresponding to particular molecular vibrations. Here we show an example of IR instrumentation. The IR instrument detects the change in absorption intensity as a function of frequency and plots the amount of light transmitted or absorbed by the sample versus energy in wave numbers. This formula shows how the transmittance is calculated. The peaks in this IR spectrum can be referred to as absorption bands. Typically, in quantitative analysis using IR spectroscopy, absorbance is used instead of transmittance. Absorbance is defined as the negative log of transmittance. Beer's law can then show how the intensities of absorption bands in IR are linearly proportional to the concentration of each component in a system. Epsilon indicates molar absorptivity, C is concentration, and B is the path length. Molar absorptivity is the characteristic of a substance that tells us how much light is absorbed at a particular wavelength. From Beer's law, we can see that the absorbance is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing reagent. In order for a molecule to be IR active, there must be a change in the electric dipole moment of the molecules. This means that peaks tend to show for polar bonds and non-symmetric vibrations. Using the previous examples, the asymmetric stretching of the carbon dioxide would produce a peak in an IR spectrum because one oxygen atom moves away from the carbon atom and generates a net charge in dipole moments. The symmetric stretching will not appear because both oxygens are moving away from the carbon and the net dipole moments cancel each other out. The greater the change in the dipole moment, the larger the peak on the spectrum. This shows the IR spectrum for carbon dioxide. A peak at 2,345 reciprocal centimeters is observed for the asymmetric stretch of carbon dioxide as well as one for the bin vibrational mode at 546 reciprocal centimeters. Carbon dioxide also has a symmetrical stretch predicted at 1,537 reciprocal centimeters. However, symmetric stretch is not IR active, so no peak is observed.
While Raman spectroscopy is not as common as IR spectroscopy, it does provide us with valuable information about molecular symmetry. In Raman spectroscopy, the sample is irradiated with visible light, which the molecules absorb and re-emit. However, some of the energy is absorbed by the molecular vibrations, causing a small portion to re-emit at a different frequency than the incident light. Light can be scattered in two ways, elastically, commonly known as Rayleigh scattering, in which there is no non-kinetic transfer of energy between the molecule and photons, or inelastically, known as Raman scattering. Raman scattering involves the transfer of energy between molecule and photon. Modern Raman spectroscopy instruments are designed to filter out the Rayleigh light because only one in every million photons will be Raman scattered. A Raman spectrum is a plot of the intensity of the Raman scattered radiation as a function of its energy difference from the incident radiation, referred to as the Raman shift. Here we show an example of a Raman spectrum. In Raman scattering, the inelastically scattered light has lost or gained energy. When the scattered light has lost energy, it is referred to as a Stokes shift, while when it gains energy, it is known as an anti-Stokes shift. A Rayleigh shift occurs when there is no overall net transfer of energy. In order for a molecule to be Raman active, it must have a change in its polarizability, meaning that there must be a change in the size, shape, or orientation of the electron cloud that surrounds the molecules. This change occurs in symmetric stretching, but not in asymmetric stretching. Here you can see both the predicted Raman and IR spectra for carbon tetrachloride which has similar vibrational modes to methane. The scissor, rocking, and symmetric stretch vibrational modes are Raman active, while the asymmetric stretch at 790 reciprocal centimeters is barely visible. However, this vibrational mode does result in a dipole change and will absorb in IR spectroscopy. Molecules have some vibrational states that can only be detected in Raman and some that can only be detected in IR due to the method's dependence on a change in dipole moment or a change in polarizability. There are advantages and disadvantages to both methods. While IR spectroscopy equipment is relatively inexpensive, Raman instrumentation has been very expensive, but low-cost spectrophotometers are becoming more available. While IR is cheaper, sample preparation can be elaborate, while it is relatively simple in Raman because molecules can be used in almost any state. Raman spectroscopy also allows for the use of aqueous solvents because water is a low symmetry molecule and all three vibrational states will correspond to IR radiation, which is not the case with Raman spectroscopy. While IR and Raman spectroscopy differ, overall they are complementary analytical techniques and the combination of the two gives the most detailed molecular information.